Hello, Spartans, future Spartans, potential Spartans, little Spartans, big Spartans. I am here today to talk to you about Spartans Midlands Trifecta Weekend. Just 24 hours ago, I, along with many other people, were running around the Beaver Castle estate on Supa. Uh, and later that afternoon, Sprint. The day before that, Beast. It was a fantastic weekend. Seeing so many people bossing it out there, it was inspiring. It really was. I went with my wife. Uh, I bought her secretly a trifecta pass earlier in the year. Um, and we went and we did it together. There will be a, a video about m m the adventures of me and my wife on, on her first trifecta uh, later this week. So please give the channel a subscribe. Let's quickly talk about the venue. Beaver Castle. It's the first time Spartan has been at this particular venue. Uh, historically, the Midlands event was considered the f flatter, the easier of the, the events that are held here in the UK. The London events are both hilly monsters. But now it's moved to Beaver Castle. Um, that is probably no longer the case. The Beaver Castle estate, if you've ever seen it, there is a nice lush castle on top of the hill that's lit up at night it's beautiful uh, and inside the grounds it's a combination of woodland open fields uh, a lake system that runs through the middle but the most important feature of the estate is that it's got gradient an insane amount of gradient and spartan will not pull their punches using this gradient. Uh, no more so than the beast. If you did the beast, you'll remember that bit where you'd sort of go over the edge, uh, down that sort of hillside, that muddy, camber-ridden hillside, to get to the path, only to have to climb back up the other side uh, almost immediately. A prime example of what Spartan likes to do with hills. Um, reuse them over and over and over again. But that's fine, that's, that's the game. We all know what the game is. Everyone has to do the same. That's fantastic. The, running around some of the some of those woodlands seeing some of those statues it's just beautiful and obviously there's water there so that can be utilized too much like it was in the, the sort of crossing across the water which was used in all three races um, yeah fantastic 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 so let's talk about the course that's been sort of weaved through the beaver castle estate um, again fantastic um, the obstacles that sit on this course we can talk about those as well there's obviously a lot of obstacles that we're very familiar with everything from the traverse the blender the twister the um, all of those things the sandbag the bucket the spear the atlas stones they're all there right they're staples of a spartan race so you they will you know you won't be disappointed those sorts of things are there by the dozen let's talk about changes to the course though it's only been about two months since henley so there's still fresh comparison in my mind about that race that weekend to this weekend um, and there have been changes to it just in that little bit of time there's been changes and i noticed this before i even went to uh, the Midlands event. I noticed looking at some of the other Spartan social media pages that there were pictures and videos of people doing the carries under things, either under barbed wire or under netting. Now, um, it's, it came as no surprise that when Spartan Phil stood there and he told us that it, they had been starting mushing obstacles closer together uh, and even overlapping, um, that it, this must have been a directive from Spartan HQ. And I think this was to address sort of claims that the franchise has been getting easier over time. A little bit of creep, perhaps, and they're probably doing this to address th that. Now, so the first example of this, and probably the biggest example of this, was the sandbag carry. Now in Henley, picked up the sandbag, marched up the top of a hill, you do a U-turn, you come back down, that's the carry, right? Similar to the bucket, you pick it up, do a loop, put it down, fast as you can. At Midlands, <laughs> you picked up your sandbag, 100 meters later, you're faced with a cargo net. So you go on a cargo net, you come out the cargo net, that's another cargo net. There's, there's five consecutive cargo nets, and they're all going uphill. Now, the problem with this particular obstacle is that you can't necessarily carry a sandbag like you would standing upright under a cargo net very efficiently. So you can't have it on your shoulder, you can't have it on your back. Um, so there was all sorts of people doing it all sorts of ways. 
in the end, mine was fingertip grabbing it, standing and letting the net run over me so I wasn't having to manage that and throwing the sandbag forward when I needed to get out. Um, and it, it doesn't, it does, did not look like there was a good way. Every way looked terrible. And everyone that was popping out of the top was exhausted. And this was on all three races. So we had to do it three times. And by the end of that third time, I, I, I was done with it. I was, I'd, I'd had my fill with the sandbag carry. So that's a prime example of of that one. It's my understanding that there's never been a lot of mud in Spartan races. That you know that those sorts of races, the mud runs, um, that they're kept separate. You know that's a separate type of OCR. Mud runs are a very much a different thing. Um, but since the sort of acquisition of Tough Mudder, Spartan race and Tough Mudder end up running over parallel weekends whether it be Spartan then Tough Mudder or Tough Mudder then Spartan. In this particular case at Midlands the Tough Mudder came first. So there were remnants of the Tough Mudder course on the Spartan course. Uh, and the examples of this were the Block Nest Monster, the cage crawl where you crawl under, they're taking the cages off so it was literally a foot of water. But most importantly there was the rolling mud. Like I say, not normally present in Spartan races. Certainly wasn't at Henley, there was hardly any mud, wasn't even much water. So suddenly having all this mud to deal with was quite a bit of an eye-opener. I'm not shy of mud, I'm, you know, there's, there's a time and a place for that. I go nuclear races for that, I go wolf run for that. I don't necessarily expect it at Spartan race. Anyway, we, we went and we, did, we got through this mud three times. Um, but when you sort of take a step back, you, you realize the consequence of having this mud present is that it's ruining the subsequent obstacles. Pretty much the next three obstacles were all rope based. That's that's kind of that's kind of why they were all ruined. You had the, the slippy climb, which is fine, but when the rope is, is slathered in fresh wet mud, oh God. You, you've got you've got a dangerous situation occurring where people can fall quite badly. Then you've got Son the hoist. Again you you arrive at a pre lubed piece of rope. Um, most people could just about manage that um, but it was quite clear that there was grip issues with this particular piece of rope. Um, you know, all the way around, all the ropes were all just shit up. Uh, and then beyond that, there was the rope climb, which, if you've ever tried to climb a slimy wet rope, um, it is difficult. You need the absolute tightest of foot locks to get to the top. It's less about grip. You never climb with your arms, you climb with your feet. But if you've not got a tight foot lock, the rope will just slime through you footlock anyway. I managed it but I, many 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 people would just succumb into the, the fact that the rope was too slimy for them. A lubricated rope is bad. You don't want people falling off because it's, it's wet and slimy. You, you want people to achieve the obstacle. Um, so that's a little bit of a moan about that. You don't need to have mud necessarily at these events. There's, there's a time and a place for it. Other, other events have it by you know loads of that sort of stuff. Go to those events if you want that. I, I was a little bit, it just didn't seem to fit right with me. But, you know, if, if they have that in future events, so be it. It's, it is what it is. It's just, just thinking out loud about it. Um, the last criticism, if you will, uh, about the obstacles um, probably was the multi rig at the end. And this was present at Henley. Uh, as well. Now I checked the footage I recorded at Henley, they've changed it ever so slightly since then. And I wondered why it felt a little bit more difficult than it did at Henley. It felt difficult at Henley, don't get me wrong. Why was it more difficult? They'd taken two of the rings out. If I, I don't suppose any of you guys noticed this, but it goes, it goes ring, 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 pole, and then it was two pieces of rope. Between the pole and the rope, there were two more rings at Henley to bridge that sort of height gap, that differential in height, which was the biggest criticism on the day. People couldn't get from the pole up to the, up to the next thing. Only the people, only like the free climbing parkour extreme dudes and dudettes were managing to get that last bell rang. It was like 95% of people are failing it. It's, it's, a, it's a way after all that effort, after all that stuff you've been through, just as you're about to finish the line and have your I feel proud moment to sort of ruin it and bring you down to have something you couldn't achieve at the end. And it, it, obviously there's the, 
the majority of people are, are going to have failed it. Sure, there's going to be the odd person that could manage it, um, but you don't want 95% of the people feeling sad as they finish. <laughs> so I, again, uh, make it a little bit more manageable. Uh, from my perspective, my, you know, I had to lift, and many guys will be the same, I had to lift my knees back. So you can't, you can't even get good swing because your knees are this close to rubbing on the ground. So that whole obstacle needs a rethink. It needs to be more manageable. You, you want at least 50% of people managing it. Sure, some people will fail, but you don't want nearly everyone failing just shy of the finish line. The, every, all, everyone's finished photos, they're going to be so sad. Oh, mm. So, yeah, last criticism. The, the actual course itself was probably better laid out than, than Henley was because Henley, all the obstacles really squashed together. Um, like in like a, in like a row almost of just obstacles one after the other one after the other, and they were all like the, all the grip obstacles were close together and all the carries were close together and I think this one did have a better way of spacing them out and rather than have all the obstacles bunched at the end, they had the beast like the course was like this the super like this and the sprint like this it, rather than every everything being at the end so that yeah it, uh, better distribution of of the obstacles that that was really really good now what do you get for finishing something like this when you fin you cross the finish line what do you get what do you get everyone that wants to know what do you get what do you get what do you get so I had my little rack of medals that the, the, the haul from this weekend um, so starting sort of here the green one that's your beast medal that's your super medal and that's your sprint medal now do all three of those uh, and you get a piece of these with each one in respective colour and you can build up your trifecta metal and you can do these over a year if you want to um, they're magnetised so they, they clip together like that fantastic um, and if you do them all in one weekend you get an additional rather large rather beautiful trifecta weekend metal now that is a real humdinger now, if you are fortunate enough to have done London West and the Midlands, you will have qualified for a times two medal. And if you sign up to Pippinford as well, you'll get a times three, but you have to do it first. So uh, yeah, you get it in a nice swanky little bag. I was quite chuffed to get this actually when, when he handed it to me. I thought I was just going to get another bag with, a, with another medal in it. And you do in fact get a Velcro patch. Now, if you've got a Built for Athletes backpack or something similar, suddenly Velcro patches are the new thing, right? The, the, this is, and then you do get a little triangle thing as well. So if you want to build up your little pyramid doohickey, triple trifecta, whatever, you do get another one of these as well. So they fit into that. So a right haul of stuff coming off the back of each of these trifectas. Now, the only criticism about the medals is that they're exactly the same as the ones I got at Henley. If you think five years from now, I'm not going to know where I got these from unless I write on them somewhere. Um, similar with the t-shirts, because I signed up to the season ticket, um, I'm just getting the same t-shirt over and over again. I'm going to end up with three of everything and four of Beast. Um, it's, it's, I would just wish that it said somewhere that this was from Midlands and one was from London West. I know it's, I know it's trying to reduce waste, etc, etc, etc. And I'm just thinking as a customer that I would prefer to have something that was specific to that event. Because like, like the medals, they're just going to get mixed up and no one will know where I got this from, on what date, um, on what event. So yeah, again, if that could ever be addressed, that would be it. That would just be awesome. Anyway. Um, to all prospective people that are thinking about doing a trifecta or a even if it's just a singular event um, if you know if there's any kind of doubt in your mind um, sign up my, my advice to you is just to get get signed up regardless of whether or not you can think you can do the obstacles uh, it doesn't matter if, you, if you're a newbie get onto the sprint opens if you're a little bit more advanced than that the super's right there and beyond that the beast and beyond so get signed up get it done get your medals get your t-shirts and just just fill yourself with pride that you've gone and done it. it there's nothing worse than sitting at home and regretting that you haven't so 
thank you for watching. Uh, more videos to come. Like I say, the I've taken my what to her first secret trifecta blah 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 video will be up in about a week because it's there's loads to edit. Anyway, um, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Spartan out. I mean, Martin out. Yeah.